Okay, we're back again, and we've got Alfadi over here, and uh, down below me, we've got our good friend, uh, well, maybe he's up above, I don't know how, when this is going to record, where he's going to be, but hey, he'll be either above us or below us, our good friend Joe from Red Judaism. Go and see his his uh, YouTube site. You will see that much of what we're saying in these episodes are unpacked in a much longer, much more in-depth on his own site, uh, his YouTube site. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to do something very explosive. And um, <laughs> Joe has warned me that he'll probably get a fatwa on his head for what he's going to say next, because he is going to prove that on the Dome of the Rock, the inscriptions that are there, it does not confront the notion that God has no son. He's going to say that the, actually it's just the opposite. It, it, it's going to prove to the Jews, because this is mainly directed to the Jews, as we saw in the last episode, that Jesus did have a son. I don't know how he's going to do it. I'm not aware that this can be done. I This is all new to me. This is the first time I'm hearing it. al this is the first time you're hearing it too. Am I correct? Yeah, that is absolutely true. This is the first time I'm hearing things like this. Okay. Well, listen, this is going to be fun then. We're going to hear, listen to it. I'm going to take notes. Al-Fadi is going to help with the Arabic, and he's going to make sure that Joe keeps to the right Arabic and gets the right, not only the right pronunciation, but also the right translation. Over to you then. Joe, we're in your hands. Thank you, Jay. All right, then. So let's get into this then. Uh, that uh, God has a son that, well, Jesus, of course, being part of the Trinity, the Father has a son. This is the, the phrase. I just... If you listen back, Did later, I say you'll Jesus hear you. has a son. I'm sorry. You said yes, yes. <laughs> Heresy. Yeah, there Heresy. will be many, many, many Gnostic Christians be very happy to hear you have said that. All right, then um, let's carry on. So the last thing we saw last time we were the last thing we had. Let's just have a look at that. Was um, we were looking at that emphatic phrases, those emphatic um, forms of uh, this is one way of emphasizing something in the math. Please correct my pronunciation if I'm if I'm saying it wrongly, Al Fadi. No, you're saying correct. I, thank you. I'll just remind people I don't speak Arabic. I know judo Arabic, so my pronunciation is maybe going to be a bit foreign, very foreign to to most Arabic uh, ears. So that's one way of emphasizing, and we saw that in the previous slide here with this one. Indeed, the Messiah, son of the Messiah Ibn Maryam, son of Mary, was God's Rasul. Uh, God's uh, word and God's spirit. And now we're looking at another emphatic word here. Now, this has got different haraka. You can see the haraka. These are the little markings on the word. Above here, we've got two. In the middle, we've got four. One, two, three, four different um, markings. And the bottom here, we've got two at the bottom. And this uh, changes the pronunciation and sometimes the meaning of this word. And right. it, it can be an, inna, or in. And it's got a variety of different meanings. Correct. And thank you. And we've got some references for you to have a look at those different meanings. If you want to use corpus.quran.com and go and have a look at Surah 80, verse 2 um, and 4171, which is what we're going to look at today. Surah 3, verse 4, you can, and Surah 43, verse 81, you can see these different forms. All right, then. So, um, this is the next part of the inscription. So this is important. It can mean because, it can mean verily, it can mean if. It's got different ways of, of meaning. So this is the, the next wall. The next part of the Dome of the Rock is the northeast wall. Okay, so in the northeast wall, um, it's saying uh, that uh, it's carrying on from the last thing that um, don't say, uh, he said, don't call uh, Jesus three things. He's, and, and also it says verily, Again, there's that word. Indeed, Allah, God, is one God, which is um, um, uh, very interesting since it was just talking about Jesus just now and saying, don't say three about Jesus. And now suddenly it's saying God is one um, and praise him. And then along comes the phrase, which you're all f familiar with, where it says, uh, apparently, they tell us it means that uh, that God doesn't have a son praise him beyond uh, that he should have a son they say or oh, praise him above the idea he should have a son and this is the interrogative case um they, they tell us that the haraka we have to put onto these uh words is the interrogative case which would be an is that correct it they it should they, they say it should be sub, uh, subhanahu an yakun luhu walad yes Correct. If you read it uh, that way, uh, so it's denying that he denying. has a son. 
Exactly. That's right. Right. Okay. So, but there are options. We don't have to use that. We can make it mean because, verily, if, because there is no haraka here. The haraka was inserted into the Abbasid okay. Quran much, Correct. much later. There's no haraka here. Let, we can insert just any in haraka we like. Yeah. Let me just jump in here real quickly so people know what you're talking about. When these, when the Dome of the Rock was created, uh, when these inscriptions were written by Abdel Malik in 692, there were no dots, there were no vowels. That's the haraka you're referring to. These were introduced by Mamun in the ninth century, the Caliph Mamun, and that's why when you go to the Dome of the Rock today, on one of the, or in, on in one of the doorways, one of the four doorways is a plaque saying that he built the Dome of the Rock. He did not build the Dome of the Rock, and many people think that that was a uh, that was the imposition. He, what he was saying is he was one that finished those inscriptions by putting the harakas there. And that's why if you take away from the harakas, th what you're saying, Joe, is we can go back and relook at just the rasam, just the letters themselves, the continental text. Oh, well, that's right. The harakas are actually only in the Quran. If you, this, this, what I have here for you is exactly what's written on the Dome of the Rock. There is no haraka. On this, uh, there is no haraka. Only the haraka were in inserted on the outside and the new inscriptions and in the Quran later, but there is no haraka here. So that means we can we can put in any haraka we like. Now, remember the context that we're looking at is that this is a message to the Jews. This is telling the Jews that those three theophanies in the uh, Old Testament are Jesus the Messiah. So, uh, and of course, you know, Jews have an understanding that uh, uh, the, the, the archangels are that's called the children of God. The children of God is, 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 is how it's referred to. I can only say it when I'm praying. So, um, uh, so here, what we're going to say is, let's put in a different haraka. Let's put in a different meaning. This is the emphatic form. Let's read it as an emphatic form. Suddenly it says, Subhanahu, there are, there are many different possibilities. But indeed, verily, truly, there is to him a son. That's what it says. It can also say, if uh, there is to him a son, so what? His is the heavens and the earth. You know, all sovereignty is in his hands. So it, he's the master of everything. What does it? It doesn't remove from his sovereignty. It doesn't remove from his gloriousness at all. He's one God and he has a son. What do you think? Um, am I telling lies, Al-Fadi? No, I mean, uh, th these are definitely strong possibilities for sure, uh, given the fact that there are no harakat, meaning diacritical markings or dotting. So, uh, I mean, I, with all the respect to my Muslim friends, they can argue all they want and they can say, well, that's not how we read it, but that's the catch. When did you learn how to read it this way? It was added later. And you cannot really deny that the way it is in the inscription could be read differently, especially in light of the view that you are bringing as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Because a lot of people would say that I don't know Arabic. I don't know what I'm talking about here. <laughs> and um, or that I'm only using Judah Arabic. But the point is, these possibilities exist. Um, and uh, here, the, so the meaning has changed entirely. Now it's saying, in, praise him because he has a son. Praise him. Indeed, he has a son. Praise him. If he has a son, then it doesn't uh, doesn't change anything. I like the one because he has a son, because um, if it's praising because he has a son, it's saying that if there is a God out there who doesn't have a son, then that's not that's not a God worthy of praise. It's the God who has a son is the one who is worthy of praise because um, because of what his son has has achieved. So um, I like that interpretation, but there it's open to many interpretations. There's a, another one I like is in verily indeed to him. There is a son. Now, let's go on to this Yakuna here. And again, we see the exact phrase here, en yakuna, is, is again here, en yakuna here, or inna yakun, or in yakun, is again down here. Here it's saying, um, um, praising indeed if he has a son, and this is a negative particle here, so this is not the same in, if, if you look, this is actually lan, this is el, mm. a lamid here. Yeah. So this is saying, the Messiah would not disdain um, if uh, even if he is, or he if he is, um, and it goes on to the next part, Abdullah, a servant of God. Now people have understood this part as meaning, well, you know, this this is saying that it's it's not um, it's it's actually saying he's not God's son; he's a servant of God. But remember, the context we're talking about here is is Judaism and Jews. So this passage here um, to remind us this abid, this word. Let's just open up uh, the passage here. 
from the Bible, which actually gives us an example of the meaning of Abed in a Judaic mind. Okay, this is Deuteronomy 32, 43, which is important because it's, we have it backed up from uh, the uh, Septuagint, which is like a very early record of the Mishnah. Okay, so um, here it says we have on this uh, Deuteronomy 32, verse 43, it says that God will avenge the blood of his servants. For the blood of his servants, he will avenge. And probably none of you can read Hebrew, but this is the word which is the same as the Arabic abd, aved, his right. servant. Exactly the same. So God will avenge the blood of his servants. And um, I've already got it set up for us here. The same passage, 32, 43, from the Septuagint gives us a little bit more Mishnaic understanding. So you get the mind of what that means in a Jewish mind when you say Aved. Same passage, 32, 43, rejoice ye heavens with him and let all the angels of God worship him. Rejoice ye Gentiles with his people and let all the sons of God strengthen themselves in him. For he will avenge the blood of his sons. So when we are saying servants, if you remember, Eliezer was a servant of Abraham who was his, like his son. We understand this is not a word meaning slave. Of course, in modern Arabic, the word of, uh, uh, abd is meaning slave. But if, if we're, again, using this Judo-Arabic perspective, it's not slave, it's a uh, servant, and it's much closer to the meaning of son. And that's the correct understanding in the mind when we say Aved. So and this, this is, is actually... Yes. This is the Septuagint, right? The Septuagint, uh, the trans uh, based on the, uh, the, the, uh, the 70s, basically, or the LXX, correct? Yes, yes. This is the translation of the uh, original Hebrew scriptures in their, in their complete right. form back in the 3rd century B.C., um, and and that's this, important because this is how the Jews understood it, like you stated. Yes, yes. And it, it, it basically adds, it's not just a translation, it's a translation plus Mishnah, which is like Jewish mm -hmm. uh, understanding of how things. So it includes yeah. the Mishnah. So the, the Mishnah of that verse, Deuteronomy uh, 32, 43, is not just avenging the blood of his servants, but to understand that his servants are his sons. So here, it's, again, the audience is... Uh, as 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 I'm, I'm I'm trying to say, the audience, the Jewish audience. So when it's saying um, in the context, indeed God has a son, and that indeed He will not object to being um, um, a servant. In the same sense, this means He's He's not objecting to be a son. So that's what it's actually saying in the context, in the Jewish context. So. Um, he doesn't disdain from being his uh, his son, and and neither do the the. Uh, the 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 angels and here it's got the word angel not archangel this word is is angels malekat so there's a distinction between Ra rosh el ela sorry rosh um um Ra rasul and rusul which are archangels and malekat which is just regular angels so um the angels uh he doesn't he doesn't object to being his servant his son and neither do the angels of course the angels are his sons as well uh, nor those who are near to God and whoever disdains from his worship and is arrogant, uh, then he will gather them towards him altogether. OK, so now um, that's the sort of red pill, blue pill, pill situation. Uh, what are you going to decide? Are you going to carry on with the, um, the perception that you've been brought up into to, to ed and educated in if you've you know are you going to continue to follow the mutasirun the, the the people who in, who interpret this from the standard abbasid narrative or are you going to throw all that away and, and come to a completely new understanding of this passage in its historical context which is that you should believe that jesus is the messiah he is the theophanies and he is the son of god and god is not um, in any way damaged by having a son in fact praise him all the more because he has a son this is, of course, reliant upon an uh, Arabi Mubin being Judo-Arabic, um, um, Arabic, which has an Arabic base, Arabic script, Western Syriac from the Jerusalem Talmud, Eastern Aramaic influence from Babylon, Romaniot's Greek influences, like, for example, the name Ilias, which is a Greek name, Isa, which is Greek without the suffix, and Hebrew influences and Persian influences. And this is what we see in the Birmingham manuscript as well. This is completely intelligible for a Jew. This is um, intelligible Arabic, Arabi Mubin. In, as I said in Hebrew, not in Hebrew, it's, it's in actually Arabic. We say Leshon Aravi Mevin, which exactly means intelligible Arabic, as opposed to Leshon Aravi, uh, which would be Lisan Arabi, which would just be plain Arabic or simple, ar straightforward mm -hmm. Arabic. 
Aravi Mubin for us is intelligible. So of course I am bringing that idea in. I've brought those words, I'm acknowledging that. So we've got those particles, that's what it means. And um, we've got the references to the sons, the, uh, the, the sons of God being the servants of God. Um, and um, then at the very end, at the very end on the northwest wall, it finally comes back uh, to um, another passage from the um, uh, from the Quran. This is now uh, it guys on. It's actually Surah 19, verse 33. And it says um, um, that was Isa, son of Mary, a, a statement of truth um, about. So and it's, it's it basically says peace be upon him the day he was. Uh, peace be upon him the day he was born and the day he died and the day he was raised to life. So there we have, not only have we just heard that he uh, he is the son of God, but he was born, this archangel, he was born, he did die, and he was raised to life. And so it's really continuing the same Christian message to the Jewish audience um, peace be upon him, the day he was born, the day, day he died, and days he's raised to life. And then it says um, a, state, a statement of truth about which they dispute. Um, and it says here, um, it's not, here it has a ma negative particle. Yeah, my camera not, is here, yeah. It is not to Allah or for Allah uh, that... And this is the, that, because it's got a ma here, we know that this is that. This is an, as opposed to inna or in. Because there is a negative particle here, we know that this, this, this is definitely that. So it's not for Allah that he should itahida. And there you go, it's again that word adopt, uh, assume, take on. He hasn't adopted min, and that's a very important word as well, from walid. Because it's saying he hadn't adopted from mankind, a son from amongst mankind. And it continues the most important thing to hammer home this point. It carries on to the next page. When he decrees a matter, he simply says to it, kan fiyakun. And there's that word again, yakun, yakun. Do you remember where we saw that? That's right, yakun. En yakun lahu walid. He doesn't adopt. It's simply yakun. When he wants it to be, it simply is. Jesus is God's son. It's not adopted as God's son. He's always been. This is the word, as it says in other parts of the Quran. We won't get into it right. now. All right, then. So that is, I think, it. That's, that's the end of that. What do you think of that, Al Fadi? Yeah, absolutely possible. Uh, the way you approach it grammatically is possible. Uh, the way that the inscription is written without diacritical marking makes it possible also. And all, uh, at the same time, the, the Judaic uh, view that you're bringing into, uh, into play here. Uh, makes it again possible. I like the fact that you use the, uh, the Septuagint or the Septuagint uh, uh, from Deuteronomy 32 to make the case that the word servants understood to be sons. So that's even makes it a stronger argument to the fact that Jesus here is not objecting to be called a servant because that means I am the son. And it's stating that Allah is objecting to have adopted from mankind when in fact he already has a son and exactly. it's that for him. So uh, it is absolutely possible. And uh, I find this view to be fascinating for sure. I'm hoping that the next time you hear this verse, it will also, if anybody says, you know, this is what it says, I'd always, I, my objective is that if there are any Arabic speakers out there or people who know this verse, that when they hear it from now on, it'll be ringing in their heads. Hold on, I know there's another possibility for this. <laughs> that, it, that the whole context could have a completely right. different meaning for them. That's my objective. Well, okay. Well, this is all new to me. This has been fascinating. al Fadi, thanks so much for taking the time. I know you have, you have a huge, busy schedule. You purposely came just to help us out with the Arabic. You've done a great job uh, standing by with us, looking at these. Uh, for you, uh, this is probably, again, for you, this is the first time you've heard it as well. Joe, thanks for doing all this work. Thanks for coming on board. Not everybody's going to agree with you. Nonetheless, it's great that you are looking at it from your standpoint. We need to have that. Those of us who are not, do not understand the, the, the Hebrew or the, the background of the Jewish background, looking at it from the Tanakh idea, the idea that you're that you are also saying that if this is put, if this is on a building that's at the seat of the holiest place for uh, Judaism, it stands to reason then that these inscriptions, not a completely different paradigm, different idea, not everybody's going to agree. 
but uh, right on the the description box. That's the great thing about YouTube. You do have the description box there to either agree or disagree. Joe will respond. Alfadi, thanks for your time. Joe, go get some sleep. It's great to have you on board. Now, okay. it's, you do need to get a nap. It's early in the morning, I know, there on the other side of the world. Jay, Joe, and Alfadi, over and out. Mm -hmm.